In this video, let's look at some examples of how to solve various kinds of literal equations, that is, formulas, for different variables. In the first example, it's asking us to solve for h in an equation where we see three different variables, a, r, and h. So as with any other equation, the first thing I would do is look for all of the different terms. I see three of them. And I would ask how many of those terms have an h in them. And of course, just that first term on the right side of the equation has an h in it. So I should try to isolate that term on one side of the equation. In this case, I could easily do that by subtracting the pi r squared term from both sides, giving me a minus pi r squared on the left side of the equation, and then just pi r squared h on the right side. How is that pi r squared on the right side of the equation attached to that h by multiplication? So if I were to divide off pi r squared, that would leave me with h equals a minus pi r squared over pi r squared. And as long as I have h all by itself on one side of the equation, and the other side of the equation contains no h's, then this is solve for h. So there's our solution. Um, one thing to mention here, someone might think to simplify this into a minus 1 because they might be thinking pi r squared divided by pi r squared is 1, so that reduces to a minus 1. Okay, just be careful there and understand that when you see a fraction like a minus pi r squared over pi r squared, that pi r squared in the denominator is a common denominator for both of the terms in the numerator, meaning this is really a over pi r squared minus pi r squared over pi r squared. So the thing is, that single pi r squared denominator in the bottom is attached to both of these terms in the top, not just one of them. So if you are going to reduce, you have to reduce with every term in the numerator. So I could certainly write this as a over pi r squared minus 1, because this fraction does indeed reduce to 1. But it wouldn't be a minus 1. It would be a over pi r squared minus 1. OK, that means either of these representations of the solution would be correct. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, this one has a set of parentheses in it. And in fact, the variable I'm trying to solve for, the r, is trapped inside the parentheses. And I know the usual way to get to a variable like that inside the parentheses would be to distribute, to break up that set of parentheses. So if I distributed on the right side of the equation, I'd get p times 1 is p plus p times r is pr. Again, how many of those three terms have r in them? Only this one. So it would probably make sense to subtract p from both sides of the equation, leaving me a minus p on the left and pr on the right side of the equation. If I'm trying to solve for r, I need to get rid of that p on the right side. How is that p attached to the r? By multiplication. So I should divide. And when you do that, I get r equals a minus p over p. And based on what we talked about in the previous example, I could certainly simplify that to a over p minus 1. So these two solutions would both be correct. In this third example, we now have something a little different, two terms that contain the variable we're after. And one of those terms, that first one, also has another variable in it. Well, the same basic principle still applies. I should try to get all terms that have the variable I want together on one side of the equation. 
and everything that doesn't contain that variable on the other side. So I'm going to move that x from the right side of the equation to the left side of the equation. So that would give me ax minus x plus 3 equals 5. Obviously, I would consider these two terms to be the two terms that don't contain the variable I'm after. So I should get those together on one side of the equation. Let's move those to the right. So now we have ax minus x equals 2. All right, now the question is how to get that x isolated so that I can get it by itself. Um, let's just take a minute here and refer to a similar example. Suppose I had something like 8x minus 5x, or let's say 8x equals 5x plus, let's say, 12. Okay, how would we solve that equation? Well, we would subtract 5x from both sides so that we get 3x equals 12, and then we would divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 4. Okay, now, of course, to get that 3x, you did 8x minus 5x, and you combined those like terms by combining the coefficients, 8 minus 5. So what you really did is you combined the 8 and the minus 5, and you could even look at that as factoring out a common factor of x, and then inside parentheses combining the 8 and the minus 5 to make 3x. Uh, that should make you see that something similar could be done here. Since those are both x terms, they can actually be combined with a common coefficient. You would get that coefficient by just combining the coefficients in front of both of the x's. Well, the first term's an a, and the other term's a minus 1. In other words, if I just factor that x out as a common factor, I would have x times quantity, parentheses, a minus 1. Now that I have that x times something else, times that parentheses a minus 1, I know I can just divide off that a minus 1, and I end up with x equals 2 over a minus 1. Okay, let's look at another one like that. Uh, but this one mixes in parentheses again. So, of course, I'm after the C, and right away I see that there's a C inside the parentheses on the left side of the equation. So I should probably think about distributing right away to break things up. So on the left, I'd have A times B plus A times C. On the right side, I'd have C times B plus c times minus a, which would be the same thing as minus ac. Okay, same question as always, how many terms contain the variable we're trying to solve for? Well, I'm trying to solve for c, and I see that there are one, two, three terms that contain c. And since two of them are already on the right together, it would probably make sense to move that ac on the left side over to the right side of the equation. That would give me AB equals BC minus AC minus AC. Now, notice here, if we apply the same tactic we've been using in the previous examples, those three terms have a common factor of C, so I could factor out the C, and that would leave me B minus A minus A. And notice that that really is the same thing as b minus 2a. It just so happens that these two are like terms. And of course they are because these two are like terms. In fact, on that first line, couldn't I just have combined those two into minus 2ac to begin with? In which case, when I factor out the common factor of c, what I'll be left with in parentheses is b minus 2a. And then using the same strategy as in the last two examples, I would divide by the b minus 2a factor.
Okay, now for something a little different. I see I have parentheses again, and this time I also have a fraction. And so there are different ways to handle equations like this, but the simplest, the easiest to understand conceptually, is to go back to what we learned or what we remember about rational equations. Clearing out denominators always makes things pretty easy. And in this case, I see the common denominator for all fractions is just nr. So how did we clear out fractions? We multiplied both sides of the equation by the common denominator. On the left side of the equation, that would give me nrp. And on the right side of the equation, I cleared out the nr denominator and was left with minus ft times quantity n minus 1. Uh, again, I'm trying to solve for n, and I can see there's an n trapped in there. So I'll distribute on the right side of the equation. Minus ft times n, and minus ft times minus 1. All right, now I have two terms that contain n. I'll get those together on one side. It would probably make sense to move that minus ftn term. That is, I'll add ftn to both sides of the equation. That'll give me nrp plus ftn on the left side equals ft. Same strategy as in the last couple of examples. I have all of the terms that contain n on the left side of the equation. Since each term, can, each term contains exactly one n, I can factor out an n, and that will leave me rp plus ft. Again, since there's a multiplication there between that n and that set of parentheses, I can divide off that entire rp plus ft factor. And when I do that, I'm left with n equals ft over rp plus ft. OK, let's do one last one, another fractional or rational equation. And again, the same tactic. When I look at the four denominators, I can see that the least common multiple, or the common denominator, would be a times b times c. So I'm going to multiply each side of that equation by a, b, c. Multiply the left side by a, b, c. Multiply the right side by a, b, c. So if I write out what that would look like, I'd be taking a, b, c times 1 over a, b plus a, b, c times b over c on the left side of the equation. And on the right side, I'd be taking a, b, c times d over a, and a, b, c times e over b, c. OK, what happens when I do each of those four multiplications? In the first multiplication, the a, b's cancel, and I'm left with c times 1. So C. In the second multiplication, it's the C that cancels. And I'm left with AB times B, which would be AB squared. That third multiplication would see the A's cancel out. And that would leave me with B times D, BC times D, rather, plus the bc's would cancel in that last multiplication, leaving me a times e. OK, this should look familiar now. If I'm trying to solve for c, I look for all the terms that contain c, and I see two of them now. Let's get those together on one side. I'm going to have to do two moves. I'm going to have to move one of the c terms to one side, and then everything else that doesn't contain c to the opposite side. It doesn't really matter which way I go. Uh, how about I subtract BCD from both sides and then subtract AB squared from both sides? 
And of course, what that gives me is a common factor of C on the left side. When you factor that out, be careful. Remember that when you factor the C out of this term, you have to have something to multiply by the C that you factored out to actually get that C. And of course, what you need to write there is 1 minus BD equals AE minus AB squared. And of course, at this point, we're back to the same trick. I know that I can divide off that 1 minus BD factor on both sides. And that leaves me with C equals AE minus AB squared over 1 minus BD.